So um, a little bit of background, uh, Valare is a very small producer. Uh, there are, the cognac market's really dominated by some very large producers. Uh, the smaller producers becoming better, better known internationally now, um, really can focus on quality and sourcing their grapes from very small regions. So um, with Valare, started in 1893 with just seven hectares of grapes and now uh, even today still only have 25 hectares of grapes so production is very small quality uh, is the focus and uh, really their ordage their long aged uh, eau de vies are what they're known for so this one in particular uh, that we're going to look at today the uh, Valare Exo Superior so as I mentioned a little earlier, has a minimum age of uh, 25 years in barrel uh, and at least 20% in the blend of 45 year old uh, or 45 years aged in barrel eau de vie. So there's no precise blend uh, all the time. And this is what I love about cognac and what I really admire about the, the master blenders at the houses in cognac is each barrel may mature at a different rate and may develop slightly different characters. And the real uh, skill of the blender is taking all of those barrels, looking at what happens uh, in the barrel, and then making sure they can select uh, just the right amount from each barrel, the right amount from each age, uh, to come up with a consistent style for their eau de vies. So uh, that's a great skill. Some of them will be tasting you know, literally 50 or 60 different barrels, maybe even 100 or uh, more barrels to, to see what their final blend is going to be. Uh, so um, with, with this one here, uh, what we're looking for is something that, that is something where you will uh, drink it on its own, uh, not usually with food, but uh, cognac can be matched with food. But for me, once you get to this, uh, well-aged Ordage style uh, cognac, really you want to be drinking it on, on its own. So uh, in front of me, you'll notice we've got some different, uh, different glasses. Uh, certainly for, uh, for tasting it at home and just, just sipping it and enjoying it, the brandy balloon or the, the wider glass is, is great, it's fine. Um, but really for tasting and really, really trying to uh, get in touch with the aromatics and the flavors, uh, these tulip glasses are really the way to go. Okay, so let's, let's pour a glass into the tulip glass. Um, so we'll pour some of our eau de vie in here. Okay. So when you go to taste or Dage Cognac, or, or any cognac to, to be honest, um, there is a couple of stages. So if this were wine, I would stick my nose directly into the glass right away. Um, but because of the strength of the alcohol, really if you do that, you're just going to get totally um, blown away by the alcohol smell. So what we tend to do is have an initial nose down here, a little lower, so that the alcohol vapors escape and we, we start to capture the character of the cognac. So initially we're smelling uh, with this one. Uh, it, it's quite fresh, floral, some citrus notes, uh, a little bit of, uh, of wood on the, on the, on the nose. Um, not too much, just a little smokiness. So that's, those are the most uh, obvious characters to begin with a little bit of caramel. Then if we get closer and have our second nose. So the second nose, we have much more complexity, uh, much, much deeper, sweeter and spicy notes. Um, so we have a little bit of, uh, of clove and, and nutmeg, a uh, bit more of that caramel. Uh, but also underneath that, the secondary characters, we have some forest floor, some very earthy notes. And that's very typical of uh, aged Ordage cognac. So um, cognac goes through, uh, the Ordage cognac goes through 
something we call Rancio Charentes. So Rancio Charentes is a four stage development of the, the nose and flavors in cognac. And uh, it's quite hard to recognize uh, unless, you, unless you've smelt it and tasted it before, but, um, but it's something that's very desirable. Uh, Rancio, for those of you who are, who are uh, good at your linguistics, Rancio is not a French word, it's actually a Portuguese word. Uh, it comes from the development of port wine in the bottle. Uh, but cognac has adopted that, uh, the Rancio Charentes, as the cognac goes through a very similar process. So what, what that means is initially, uh, and with this one, there's a little of that going on on the nose, and that's where I'm getting the truffle and earthy forest floor notes. Okay. The next thing we want to do is taste the cognac. So I think really any XO that you're going to taste, and particularly older XOs, you really need to taste a small amount first. Okay, so let's just taste the smallest sip possible. Now, the reason we do this is we want to coat, coat our mouth in the, in the actual um, spirit that we're going to taste. So I'm getting quite fresh, fruity uh, notes from that. A bit of honeysuckle, a little bit more of the earthy notes as well. Um, and some floral, candied citrus, um, orange peel, this kind of character. Um, but now that my mouth has a coating of what's going to go into it next, now I can take a slightly bigger mouthful and really experience the flavor. Now, uh, now that I've tasted it twice, it's really mouthfilling this wine. Um, it's, um, it's got more, much more of that candied, candied peel, earthy truffle notes, uh, a little bit more vanilla, some cloves, nutmeg, some sweet spices, um, a very long finish. But one thing you will notice is having that two-step tasting process. Your mouth is not shocked by the alcohol. So you're warming up your mouth by that, that tiny taste to begin with. And then your mouth is really ready to really uh, explore the flavors in there. It's got a beautiful silky texture. Uh, it's really mouth filling and very, very long. Uh, the finish has got a, a little bit more of that toasty nutty oak, uh, maybe some hazelnuts and a little bit of cedar. And it just goes on and on and on. Absolutely delicious. Uh, what you will find, uh, and this is quite typical, and, and uh, now that I've, I've had it in my mouth for a while and the finish is quite long, I'm noticing a bit more of the butterscotch and toffee kind of notes. Um, this, this is an important part of cognac and Audage cognac, and it comes from the breakdown of the oak, uh, the, the tannins from the oak. So um, oak is very important in cognac. As you can see, next to, next to cognac is the Limoges region, where the Limousin oak comes from, which is most of, most of the oak that's used in cognac. Now, it's white wine that we make our cognac with, our eau de vie. So there's no tannin really coming from the white wine. The tannin in this eau de vie comes from the oak barrels. And after a certain point in time, that tannin naturally starts to break down. It undergoes a chemical process, it oxidizes, breaks down, and forms ketones. And these ketones are chemical compounds which have a lot of sweet, fruity aromas and caramel, butterscotch aromas. So, uh, unlike a lot of wines, which uh, table wines, which dry out and get less sweet as they get older, something that's very particular about cognac is this beautiful sweet note that you get on the nose and a little bit on the palate. Uh, that's a sign of a very well-aged Audage cognac, and uh, I love it. It's fantastic. So uh, enjoy your cognac. Uh, I'm sure you, there's a lot of cognac out there to explore. Uh, I really recommend trying some different aged cognacs and comparing them, finding the blend that's right for you, uh, and enjoy. Right. <laughs>